You know, I was just thinking, time. Yeah, it's one of those things where it just never seems like we have enough of it. But when we're kids, it seems like time can't go fast enough. Sometimes we have a, a thing we're going to do or we're buying a, a new toy and we just can't wait to pass the time. But I really want you to think about time. What is the single most valuable resource we have? Is it diamonds? Is it platinum? Is it gold? No, it's time. It is the single resource that we can never get back. Therefore, it is the only resource that is truly priceless. But what have we been taught by society to do with time? And what have we been taught about time and money? These are the topics I really wanna talk about because when it comes to money, we can't talk about money until we talk about the reason we want to build wealth. And the only reason you should wanna build wealth is to take back time. My name's Chris Noggle, this is What Now? What's next? So let's dive into this, because this is something I think about all the time. Think about time. It seems like the older we get, I'm now 46, the faster time seems to go. You know, a Saturday and a Sunday flies by and you're just like, oh my God, what happened to that time? This happened and that happened and other people wanted to steal your time from you in the nicest of ways. But I mean, come on, think about weekends. When's the last weekend that you truly had absolutely nothing to do? You didn't have to mow the lawn. You didn't have a wedding to go to, a birthday party to go to. You didn't have some function to go to. You just got to literally enjoy your time. It's probably been a while, right? But let's really go back in time and think about what we've been taught about time when it comes to money. We've been taught one thing, and that is to exchange our hours for dollars. We've literally been taught to go out there and value our time by this, by money. Because I know when I was younger, when I started working on a farm at 14, my hour was worth about $3.50. And I remember sitting there picking corn and tomatoes and all the things we did on the farm thinking, oh wow, I can't wait till I make $5 an hour like these other guys. And then all of a sudden, I was making five an hour. And then it was six an hour and then seven an hour. And when I was making seven an hour, I couldn't wait till I was gonna make 10 an hour. And that was gonna be in this position or that position. And then all of a sudden you made 10 an hour, but then it was off to the next one. But you, you know, through this whole journey, I want you to really focus on what we do. We put our time in our mind at a dollar value. And if I were to ask all of you right now to tell me what your hour is worth, I bet you in the comments, many of you will put a dollar amount. Some will be $50, some will be $100, some will be $1,000. Some of you will put down priceless. And that truly is how much your time's worth. Before we get into any more of this time talk, I think it's about time right now for you to click that little button. It's called the subscribe button because I'm giving you my time right now making these videos and my time truly is priceless. So for that exchange of me giving this video and this content to you, I ask for one second of your time to just click that little subscribe button. And while you're at it, there's a little bell up top. That's right, smash that bell so that you're notified just like that. Every time when a new video goes up, you'll hear bing, and that's all you need to know. But getting back to the talk of time and money, really think about that. How many of you know somebody who has literally saved their way to wealth? They, they literally saved so much money that they just became wealthy. Do you know anybody that did that? Because I don't. Because you can't save your way to wealth. You can save a lot of money, but then something has to happen and this was just a pivotal point in my life when I realized this. I realized that in order to build real wealth, just like the wealthiest families in history, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, any wealthy family, you are going to have to learn how to make your money work for you. You see, there's only 24 hours in the day and that means there's only a few that you can trade. So being that we only have a few hours that we can trade, in reality, trade for money I'm talking about. We need to find a way to make more money without trading hours for it, without putting our effort in, without working harder, working longer, and well, what the heck, 
without taking on any more risk. And how do you do that? You learn. You learn what the wealthy do. You learn how to mimic exactly what the wealthy do, and that is their money goes out and works for them because their money has no restrictions. Their, their money can work 24 seven. It doesn't need breaks, doesn't need lunch, doesn't need vacation time. And it's certainly not gonna go marching out in front of your place with a picket sign saying, I'm going on strike because you work me too much. Absolutely not. Your money doesn't have feelings because your money is a tool that was built to work for you. Except we have not been taught how to do that. We weren't taught that in grade school. I don't remember being taught that in high school. Do you remember being taught how to make your money work for you in college? No. Every one of the things that you were taught in school all resulted in one thing, you and your time. So when we think about wealth, I think it's really important to think about wealth in a time frame. I think it's important to think about wealth as a means to creating more time for you. More time for you to spend with your family laugh with your children, play with your children, go on vacations with the family without having to worry about, oh my gosh, I gotta work a couple hours when we go on vacation. Sorry, honey, it's just what it is. We need to find a way where our money working for us provides us more time to live the lives we want to live, unrestricted by trading hours for dollars. That sounds too good to be true for some of you, doesn't it? It sounds like that could never happen, but it could because it, it does happen. But it doesn't happen until you change your mindset around money. Because if you always think the only way to have more money is to work more, when I talk to some folks, they literally tell me, oh, I'm gonna have to get a second job. I'm gonna have to get a third job. I talk to wealthy individuals with millions of dollars and they think they have to go back to work because they think for some reason they're broke. This is a mindset problem. It's not a problem of any other sorts. So until you fix your mindset around money, nothing will change. Now, let me pivot. Yes, I understand that there is a point of your life where you have to work for money because you have to go out there and you have to work to accumulate money. But here's another big problem. Tell me if this is, is true or not. When we make more money, when we work harder, work longer, take on overtime, and we make more, what do we do with that? Do we save it? Do we keep that money? Because this is what I teach my daughter. I teach her to pay herself first. That's right. For every $10 she will ever earn, she knows that she is to keep $1 for herself, 10%. She makes 10, she keeps one. The rest, yes, that's gonna go to pay for living expenses. And I'm gonna teach her too, that although 10% is the rule, it's the minimum. So eventually for every $10 you make, you save two and then three and then four and as much as you possibly can. Because as you keep more money, there's more money that can go to work for you. And when money starts working for you, it starts to compound. It starts to actually grow faster. And it doesn't grow faster because you're out there working harder. Do you see what I'm trying to say? But that capitalization period that you have to go through, it's a difficult one. So for any of you that are young watching this, this is your time to shine. While you're young, go out there, crush it. Give it all you got. While you got the energy, put the time in. Make the money, but don't spend it. We've been taught to make money and go and spend more. That's why there are little laws around this. It's called the Parkinson's law. Expenses always rise to meet income. Why? Because that's what we've been conditioned to do. We get a raise, we spend it. Sometimes you got a bonus coming, you already spent the bonus. You remember the movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? Before he got the bonus, he put the, the order in for the brand new pool and he was envisioning it and then he didn't get the bonus and he's uh-oh and his brother-in-law went and kidnapped the boss and well, you know the movie, right. But that's what we do. We spend money before we even make it in anticipation of making it. And how do we anticipate making it? Working more, which takes more of your time. This is a revolutionary thing that you need to realize. That doesn't have to be the case. But that does mean you have to change some things. You have to stop spending every penny you make. Oh, but Chris, I live paycheck to paycheck. I've, I can't do anymore. I, can't, I have no money to save. Sure you do. Where's your money going? Have you ever sat down and done a budget? Where do you write checks to? Who's it going to? That's right, somebody else's bank. So why don't we just start there? Why don't we start trying to take back the money you're giving away. That's the best way. Before you ever invest, before you ever get into real estate, before you ever start lending money, get rid of your debts. 
because the money that you're giving away every single month is the fastest way to build wealth. Because if you can just take back the money that you're giving away, think of how grandiose that is. How much money every month do you write checks to someone else for? Add it up. Is it 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000? Some of you are like, oh, I'm not even gonna tell you. You should tell me because maybe you should look in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm spending too much. Good. If you're spending 1,000, 5,000, $10,000 writing checks to somebody else's bank for that, i.e. credit cards, lines of credit, home equity lines. If you're doing that, think of how much money that would be if you just wrote those checks back to yourself. Now, I know you don't understand how to do that yet, but I teach that. And I got plenty of videos on this YouTube channel. So again, sorry to ask again, but now would be the time to click the subscribe button so that you can subscribe and also that alerts button because I'm always telling you how to take your expenses and your debts and turn them into wealth. It's so simple. It's called recycle and recapture the money you give away. But anyway, back into this. Here's another thing we always do in our lives. We put everything else in front of ourselves. Let me repeat that. This folks is lazy cash. He is a kitty cat. He's lazy too, just like all cats. So now that I've got your attention because my furry little critter here named Lazy Cash joined us, let's get down to some really important things. We put our needs last, as if we only deserve the leftovers. I wanna give you a personal story, and I'm sure many of you can relate. When you were a child, did you have a poster on your wall? I did. I had a poster of a car, but not just any car. It was a black Porsche 911. Now this was back in the late 1990s. You see, I was a teenager at that time, so looking at a black Porsche 911 on the wall, to me, that didn't even seem real. It didn't seem like I could ever have one, but I looked at it every day. I stared at that car every single day because it was a poster on my wall. Now, let's pause. In the comments right now, put what your poster was. Was it of a pink unicorn? Was it a Barbie? poster. I mean, come on, let's be honest with ourselves. Some of you had Barbie posters on your wall. Was it a car? Was it a house? All those posters you had on the wall, do you know what they were? They were a vision board, a vision board of your dreams, your goals. So why did we stop dreaming? Why don't you have whatever that was on your wall, in your garage, in your backyard? Why is it not there? Did you have pictures of horses? How come you don't have a horse stable? Why don't you have the Lamborghini or the Porsche in your garage? Oh, I know. Oh, because it, that's not realistic. I don't make enough. Is it that you don't make enough or is it that you just spend too much? Is it that you just haven't had your money working for you? Now, I'm not bragging here, but I do want to explain something. That black 911 that I had on my wall, that would have been 1997, there on or around. That car sits in my garage. Now, I'm not saying that to boast or to brag that I got a Porsche in the garage. Because for most of my life, up to the age of 46, I told myself that that was out of reach. I told myself, someday I'll have one of those. One day I'll have one of those. You know, I kept pushing it off into the future. And then that one day happened around July, right before my 46th birthday. Some would say this is a midlife crisis or whatever, but here's what happened. I said, no more am I gonna put off what I can have today till tomorrow. So I didn't just foolishly go out and spend more money that I can't afford. Here's what I did. I sat down and I figured out to afford that vehicle, how much of my money needs to be working for me and at what rate. And I figured out what that number was. I knew that my money had to be working for me at a rate of between 10 and 12% in order to pay for that car. So you see, I didn't have to work harder. I didn't have to work longer. I didn't have to go out there and take on excessive risk. All I needed to do is figure out how many of my tools needed to be working for me in order to pay for that car. But see, then I went a step further. I financed that Porsche with my own private banking system. You hear me talk about this all the time. What is it? It's called the infinite banking concept, but that's the process. You see, 
my money that I save, the money that I pay myself first, and I've been doing this for a long time and you should get started with this. That money goes into a specially designed whole life insurance policy. And then what I do is I take that money out of the whole life as a loan, so the insurance company doesn't actually take my money out, they take their money from their general fund, they loan me part of the debt benefit, my money just serves as collateral. So I don't stop earning interest and dividends on my money. My money's always working for me, 24 seven without interruptions. But I still have the money that I took out of that policy. And what I do is I have that money go to work for me. I invest that money, I lend that money. I have that money continually work for me. See, even my cat's super interested. He's like, wait a second, dad, I can get a new scratching post, one of those really tall skyscrapers, and I don't have to work harder for it? No, Cashy. All you need to do is have the tool work for you. See, he's getting it, folks. How come you're not? So we took the loan from the whole life, and I then had that money go to work for me. I lend that money out. I paid off all my debts a long time ago, but I also buy cars with that money. Yes, I used my specially designed whole life to purchase this Porsche, but you see, I didn't stop there. I went to bankrate.com. You check it out, bankrate.com. You can do a car loan calculator. That's right. And I just said, for the purchase price of this Porsche, how much would that cost per month? And you know what I did? I then made payments back to my policy. Loan repayments back to my policy for exactly the amount that that car would have cost. But you see, before I did that, I made sure that my money working for me produced enough income to pay that monthly payment. You see what I'm trying to say? I created my own banking system. And in doing that, outside of me sitting down and dreaming about this car and figuring out and reverse engineering how to afford this car, I didn't have to work any harder. I didn't have to work any longer. I literally found a way to have my money work for me. And that created time. And that time can now be used taking my family for rides in the car. That time can be used for going on vacations with my family. And I want the same thing for you. In order to do what I just said, I had to capitalize the banking system. I had to first apply law number one, and that is pay yourself first. Then I had to apply law number two of wealth, make your money work for you. And then I went on to law number three, protect your wealth. I don't wanna give back the money that I just made. So I had to find a way to protect my wealth. And then law number four, I couldn't get too greedy with my money because I've seen that if I'm not realistic with my money, the tool, then that money can flee me. That money will just leave me because greed is not good. And then law number five, I had to do what I'm doing right now and I had to give unconditionally. I had to create videos. I had to give away my best stuff for free. I had to tell the stories that have gotten me where I'm at. That's giving. And then law number six happens automatically. You create a legacy. You create a legacy by the things you teach, by the things you teach your children, by teaching your children to pay themselves first and to make their money work for them so that they don't have to spend their entire life working for money so that they can someday, hopefully, I preface that word hopefully, retire, when statistically people that retire and lose purpose and don't do anything in retirement typically live, well, not much longer. And I don't want that for you. So folks, I want you to think about the reason why you wanna make more money, the reason why you wanna build more wealth, and the only reason you should come up with is to create more time. Folks, if you enjoyed this video, check this one right here out. That video will teach you everything you need to know about the infinite banking concept, and I wanna also thank you for giving me your time, because if you've watched this video up to this point, that means you have given me something precious, something priceless your time. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What Now? What's Next? We'll see you on the next one.